Hi everyone and welcome to Seminar 8 of Applied Company Law. Today we will be discussing the case study of Supreme Flooring in relation to shareholder remedies. We will be using the Hierarch method to analyse the seminar question. The Hierarch method is described as follows. Highlighting relevant facts, identifying legal issues, relevant law, application of the law, and a conclusion. Let's begin by highlighting the relevant facts. Supreme Flooring is in the business of selling floor coverings with Peter, George and Luna as the sole shareholders and directors of the company. Peter and George are brothers, while Luna is their first cousin. It is stated that all profits incurred by the company are distributed as director's remuneration. This means that directors are compensated financially in exchange for the services they perform on behalf of the company. A clause in the Supreme Flooring's constitution exists which sanctions the removal of a director by ordinary resolution in a general meeting. Luna and George have been arguing lately. Luna alleges that George is engaging in improper practices in buying and selling carpets and flooring from a friend in Italy and is receiving secret profits. George strongly denies these allegations. Due to Luna's allegations against George, Peter and George make the decision to exercise their majority voting power at a company's general meeting to have Luna removed from the board of directors. Now we'll be talking about the issues. The first issue is can profit earn outside but related to the business be kept for personal use? This issue can be seen in the diversion of profits, where Luna alleges that George had been engaging in improper practice and receiving secret profits when buying and selling carpets from his friend. It is believed that all profits should be distributed as director's remuneration. The profit earned should be given back to the companies, where the board will determine executive remuneration and bonuses. The remuneration rewards director based on their effort contributed to the organization as well as reflecting their duties and the legal liabilities in the company. As a result, the profit earned by George should be given back to the company. Issue number two is, is the dismissal of Luna possible? Oppression can be seen when Luna is being removed from the board of directors. This action is valid because the company has a clause which enables the removal of a director by an ordinary resolution in a general meeting. Therefore, it requires the bare majority, which means a 50% vote from the directors to remove a person. However, the action is unethical. Peter and George should not have dismissed Luna because of her allegation on George's action. Hence, the board has acted in a manner of oppressive and unfairly prejudicial, disregarding the complaint's individual interests. I'm Tina. I'm going to talk about the relevant law about this case. Following the terms under the chapters of Corporation Act 2001, Luna has the right to sue Peter and George for improper conduct. The Corporation Act clearly pro provide the duties of the company's directors receiving secret profits by some shareholders causes an oppression effect to the other shareholders. Firstly, under the Corporation Act 2001 of Section 232, unfair behaviors include holding a position as a company member or in any other capacity oppressing other members of the company or unfairly treating or discriminating against other members of the company and excluding minority shareholders the behavior of. In this case, George and Peter are brothers. They made a plan to remove Luna from the board of directors, which allowed Luna to be withdrawn by a majority. The resolution clearly absurd and it discriminated against Luna, which was unfair to her. Secondly, according to Section 233 of the Corporation Act, 
the court can require the company to modify the company's terms and regulate its future behavior to ensure that future work can proceed fairly and smoothly. For example, in the Wade and Rugby Union case, the oppressive remedies law is applied, and the board of directors has no right to exclude any member from the board of directors in the company's article of association. In addition, under the operation remedy of the Act, Section 233, the court has the right to make order permitting relief to Luna. Also, in the chapter on oppressive remedies, the court can order liquidation of the company. Once debts are incurred in a company, they are equitable share among all stakeholders. Thirdly, according to Section 234 of the Corporation Act 2001, Luna has the right to sue Jordan and Peter. Incorrect transactions are unfair in business. In this case, George allegedly receiving secret profit and it is unreasonable for Luna to be dismissal. Because of the overwhelming actions of the George and Peter faced by minorities, and the court has the responsibility to apply fire and loss. Finally, as the section 236, 237, and 239, the company's assets are in the hands of shareholders, and all profits and debts incurred by the company should be distributed to all shareholders. Obviously, George and Peter may violate this act as the improper practice. They engaged in could be unfair in case debts incurred in the company. This may lead to debts which may lead to the company's bankrupt. And the company may be declared bankrupt due to misuse of fund. Hi, my name is Al. I'm here to explain the application of law in this case and to give legal recommendation and course of action that is available to Luna. Shareholder or member's remedy is a form of protection for their investments in a company. It is a power the shareholders have when detecting if directors have breached their duties and what they should do. Remedies are the laws in place to fix these situations. One of the main remedies that is a personal matter from shareholder or members is the oppression remedy. There are four steps to prove a case of oppression remedy. Who, identify, breached, and remedies. The process of oppression remedy will be explained with Luna's situation and legal actions available to her. During Supreme Flooring's internal conflicts, Luna brought allegations towards George of secret unethical trades within the company. Luna was voted out by Peter and George being the minority shareholder. Although Luna was removed from the board of directors through proper procedure in a company's general meeting through order and resolutions, Peter and George's decision on a minority shareholder shows clear oppression towards Luna. Luna was heavily invested into the company by being one of the only shareholder and directors of Supreme Flooring. Under Section 234 of the Corporation Act, being a formal member with asset consent, Luna can apply to the courts for remedy alleging oppressive action from both the company and directors Peter and George. Luna have identified the oppressive task of Peter and George being brothers and holding majority voting power in order to remove her from the board of directors, especially after her allegations of breaching directors' duties from George. Luna applied the objective tests for oppression developed from the case Wade 
the New South Wales Rugby League, where the Lunar's removal from the Board of Directors was reasonably made under any Board of Directors as there is a clear bias from Peter and George with their majority voting powers and a clear conflict of interest of allegations from a minority shareholder. The answer is no. This proved Peter and George's action of Luna's removal was oppressive, hence they have breached Section 232 of the Corporation Act. As Peter and George have breached Section 232, Luna has a course of action to receive remedies for oppression under Section 233 of the Corporations Act. The court may order Supreme Flooring to buy out Luna's shares at a fair market price or modify and regulate future conduct of the company or even the removal of Peter and George from the Board of Directors in replacement with Luna. As the oppression remedy is personal to the shareholder, the case is brought in Luna's name. Luna can choose to seek one or more of these remedies that benefits her directly to fix the unfairly prejudicial action held against her. However, Luna needs to be advised the unlawful behavior from George are only allegations. If Luna is unable to provide to the court evidence of George engaging in unethical actions, or Peter and George can provide other legitimate reasons why Luna was voted out from the board of directors, Luna's court action would cease. Therefore, it is essential Luna think about what if she loses against the company, whether she can afford to pay for the whole legal process of lawyers and accountants, as well as the time and energy she spent on the case. Is it all worth the remedy she may potentially receive? Now that we have highlighted the relevant facts, identified legal issues, relevant law, and applied the law, it is time to make our concluding statements. Conclusively, through the application of the objective test, it is found that Peter and George, although acting within their rights established in the company's constitution, were in breach of Section 232 of the Corporations Act. As Luna's removal from the board was oppressive, unfair and prejudicial, she can seek oppression remedies against Peter and George under Section 233 and 234 of the Corporations Act. Luna must, however, take into account other considerations such as providing evidence behind her allegations against George, as well as the possibility that Peter and George can supply legitimate reasons as to why she was removed from the board.